These Larry Labradors are on the verge of causing a divorce. Red! It's either I'm going or the dogs are going. Their constant barking, destruction and disobedience... Sit! 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 ..have driven owner Claire to despair. I can't take it anymore, it's just too much. Victoria Stilwell may have spent a decade dealing with doggy delinquents... Watch... Watch me! But can she bring these hounds to heel and save this marriage? Or has she met her match? Unbelievable. <laughs> two years ago, Claire and Chris Foster were told that they couldn't have children. So they bought two lively labs, Red and Jasper, to join Oscar, their well-behaved Staffordshire cross. Then a miracle happened, and along came baby Ellie. But what should have been a happy ending turned into a nightmare as the two labs got out of control. The ringleader is Red, who leads Jasper astray and drives poor old Oscar to distraction. Right from bringing Red home, the two of them together were just a nightmare from day one. Chris is up early and works long hours, leaving poor Claire alone all day with the baby and the loony labs. When Chris walks out the door to work, that's it. They just turn into the dogs from hell. She can't do her housework. They're a danger to baby Ellie. No, Red. Red off. No. And walking them is a health hazard. Boys! But they're even harder to control when they get a sniff of another dog. <laughs> and with husband Chris home late from work, the last thing he's going to do is walk these hectic hounds. Walking your dog is supposed to be an enjoyment, but it's not at all. It's a hassle. So they're kept indoors all day, where they're slowly destroying the house. But Chris doesn't see the problem. They're just nuts, both of them. But still lovely. He doesn't understand what it's like to be at home all the time and to be stuck in with them. Claire is at breaking point. Oh, stop it! I can't do it anymore. It's too much. Something's got to give. Top dog trainer Victoria Stilwell is the dog's last chance, and maybe Chris's too. You can't blame a dog for bad behaviour if you haven't given them adequate training. Trained Labradors can lead blind people across a busy road, but untrained, they're more likely to pull someone into the path of the next bus. Originating from Canada, Labradors were used by fishermen to bring in nets from icy waters. When people first bred them, yellow labs were culled at birth as they were seen as inferior to black ones. But nowadays, yellow puppies form over a quarter of the 45,000 Labradors bred and sold each year, making them the number one favourite breed in the UK. Popular or not, these two need to be taken in hand. But first, Victoria needs to see how bad the problems have got. And it doesn't take a second to see just how out of control these dogs are. Red leads and Jasper follows. Does this always happen when you answer the door to people? Yeah, every time. Well, that's dangerous. Jasper! And inside the house, the dogs don't listen to a word Chris and Claire say. Come on, come on, come on, come on in. Come on. in, in, in. Red, 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 red. Just a good boy, Jasper. Red, come on, no. Red, red. red. Jasper! Ah. Do you control them around the house? Because it does, uh, yeah, manic is not the word. Yeah. It's manic. I just don't seem to have any control of, over them whatsoever. Yeah. I just can't cope. I mean, she's no. going to be crawling <laughs> soon as well, mm. which is going to make it even worse. Mm. When do you walk them? I mean, you said you... Very, very rarely. Two Labradors mm. who are relatively young and they yeah. don't get out to walk. No, not really. We can't even put them out in the garden because of the amount of barking they do and they upset the neighbours. So we have, we have to keep them indoors all the time. It's got to the point where I've said something has got to give. Either, you know, it's me, you've got to choose me and Ellie, or the dogs. And something will go if they don't start behaving. Mm. We'll see. I realise that they're not getting the life that they deserve, but mm. at the same time, I don't want 
I don't want the thought of them having to go to a, a shelter. Dad upsets you a lot. What astounds me is that Chris doesn't seem to get the severity of the situation. Claire has threatened to take his daughter and herself away if something's not done with the dogs. And he sits there and says, oh, yeah, no, I, I don't want them to go. But I want to keep my dogs. Hello, wake up. She's sending you out a real warning. She's telling you she's had enough. And he's not listening. <laughs> Victoria needs to see how hard Claire's day-to-day -day life is. So while Ellie has a nap, Claire tries to get on with some household chores. But the dogs won't let her do a thing. Jasper! As if that wasn't bad enough, their constant barking is intolerable. Jasper! Be quiet! Time to bring out the decibel meter. This is reading over 120, and that is louder than a pneumatic drill. I mean, this must be really bad for Ellie to hear that. But it's not just the barking that could be bad for Ellie's health. No, red off. Red, no, no, red off. Red has been known to actually drop a bone on Ellie's head. Not quite as big as this one. Um, she was sat in a bouncer chair and he just walked past her and dropped it on her head. Calm down! You have four children here. Do you have three children with very big, big paws and teeth? There was another little scrap like that. And yeah, Ellie's in the time. middle of that. Red, leave! I'm not surprised that Claire is beside herself. They're cooped up in this house all day. It's a recipe for absolute disaster. These dogs may never get out, but Victoria needs to see for herself how disobedient they are on walks. So Chris is taking them out for the first time in eight weeks. It's hard enough for him, but he needs to realise how dangerous it would be for Claire with a baby in tow, which is why we've had to replace Ellie with a stump baby. No. Just the no. Red. There is no way that you could walk three dogs and a baby. No. It would... Thank goodness we're using a baby doll for this. That's hurt my hands. They're too strong. That's shocking, isn't it? And the straining on the lead increases tenfold when there are any other dogs in the vicinity. I don't think they're being aggressive towards other dogs. I just don't think they can believe they're actually seeing another dog. Victoria's seen enough. It's time to set Chris and Claire straight with some home truths. I see a family that is completely overwhelmed and have got themselves into a situation that is now going to be extremely hard work to get out of. It's terrible when dogs that should be a pleasurable part mm. of your lives actually cause arguments, yeah. actually cause to the point where you say, I've had it, I'm off, I'm going. Mm. For you to not heed that warning is insane. Nothing comes before that little girl. And that's why I want you to get real. Okay. The root cause of this manicness, this barking, this jumping up, this going crazy, the running out of the door, everything is due to the fact of lack of exercise. And sensory stimulation. Out there, mm. with smells and sounds and sights of different things, mm. they're doing what dogs are supposed to do. It's not that we don't want to do it, it's just... There is no excuse mm. for saying, I don't have time for them. If you can't do it, it would be kinder 
to rehome at least one of your dogs. To be fair, that, that is exactly what I've been saying for yeah. I don't know how long, but I think it's taken somebody like yourself that actually knows what they're talking about mm. to bring it home to you. Yeah. 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 Later that night, Chris starts to get the message. I want to get rid of him. But when they are like they are with Claire, it's awkward. The next day, it's the start of a new regime for Red and Jasper. But Victoria won't start training until she's set out the ground rules. Your dogs need to be walked and they need to be walked twice a day. If you can't do that, it's not fair on your dogs. So somehow, you have to work out a schedule of how you're going to do that. Okay. It does mean that you come home from work mm. and you're tired, but you still have to walk your dogs. That's fair enough. If you can't do that, then you are not giving your dogs what they need and the problems will not get better. Chris doesn't know it yet, but he's about to be treated like a dog. I want you to experience what it's like to be within four walls okay. for a long time right. and not to have any kind of sensory or mental stimulation. Right. Chris will be locked up in solitary confinement for the whole morning. And whilst he gets a taste of his dog's life, Rebel Red is finally getting out. But can he be brought to heel? To help you with Red's pulling, I've put a no-pull harness on him, which is different from a regular harness, because when he pulls, he actually feels like his legs are being pulled into the air. So this will give you much more control. If we just start walking off, let's go. Good boy. I want to get into his brain that if he pulls, that makes me go in the other direction. He doesn't want to go in the other direction. He wants to be in that direction. But when he pulls, he doesn't go. Let's go. Each time I want the dog to walk along with me, I'll say, let's go. He's a clever Very doggy. Good. good boy. When he looks to you, as yeah. if to say, am I doing OK? Tell him he's a good boy. That's a really good, good boy. Good boy, Red. That's it. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Good boy. Good boy. Claire and Red are making great strides. We could do this, couldn't we, Red? But after half an hour of confinement for Chris, the boredom has already set in. Now, this is going to be the test. OK. Having both dogs at the same time. Let them listen to your voice. Right. But when you say, let's go, they follow you whether they're pulling or not. Let's go. Let's go, Red. Come on. <coughs> let's go. <coughs> Good boy, Jasper. Good boy. After an hour's work, Claire has both labs under her control. That is, until they see another dog. <laughs> Even though the walking is improving, the reactivity is insane. Yeah. Red, especially, is a much bigger problem than I first thought. OK. So Victoria's taken Red off for some one-to-one -one training. Once he reacts, it's impossible to do anything. If he sits and he waits when there are people coming past, yeah. he gets fed chicken. That brings a positive association with the people coming towards him. It gives you control and it stops that emotion of reaction. Normally, the mere sight of these dog walkers would set Red off, but Victoria's starting the training from a safe distance. Watch me. The use of a vocal command and food is distracting Red from the other dog's presence, stopping him from getting overexcited. Now we're going to go a little bit closer to see if they can walk past, to see if we can still focus on me and the chicken. OK? OK. It's time to push Red's limits and get him within lunging distance of the Shih Tzu. As soon as you see them and clock them, get the focus back and watch me. Everything's going well, but suddenly Red loses all focus. Take him away. Take him away. And when he's calmed down, training can resume. Watch me. That's it. Good boy, Red. Red, watch me. As with all dog training, there's no quick fix, but persistence pays. Now the dog is right there. Watch me. That's good it. Keep focus. Good boy, Red. Watch me. There's a good boy. Good boy. Watch me. It's a result. 
Red's never been anywhere near this close to a strange dog without turning into a wild animal. Red has huge issues. There's a mountain of work that we have to do with him. But I was cheered by his reaction to Claire refocusing his attention from the dog onto her. It really went very well. So that's the starting point. Chris has had two hours of solitary confinement now. While his dogs are finally getting the taste of fun and freedom they've been missing out on for far too long. This is something that you can do when you and Ellie are just here by yourselves. Yeah. These bubbles are bacon flavour. Oh, right. Yeah. It's giving them mental stimulation, but it's also stimulating their senses too. Because they're smelling the bacon, they're tasting the bacon, they're seeing the bubbles. And it's just a really fun thing to do. Yeah. And because they're so preoccupied, they're not even barking. They look really happy. <laughs> they do, don't they? Now that's a dog that likes bacon bubbles. <laughs> Chris has been shut up with no mental stimulation or exercise all morning. But has the penny dropped? How does that feel? Boring. Yeah, you could say that. If you think that your dogs go through pretty much that 24 hours a day. Mm. They just mm. need more. Mm. A lot more than we're thinking. They need to get outside. Now that Chris seems to have got the message, it's time for him to learn how to control Red's barking while Claire spends some quality time with Ellie, safely away from the ear-splitting racket. Red barks a lot, mm -hmm. but exercise and mental stimulation will reduce that. There's also a technique that you can use to stop red barking. Mm -hmm. You have to make red bark. Mm, that could be fun. Mm. <laughs> so I get a dog to speak, yep. and then when I say quiet, they get a food reward. Yep, then you definitely. can use that quiet yep. when they're barking. Speak! <coughs> good boy, good boy, go on, go on, go on, good boy, good boy. Speak, <coughs> speak, <coughs> speak, quiet. Good boy. Speak! Speak! Quiet! Good boy. That's how you do it. Ooh, that's what we want. But will Red listen to Chris? Time. Speak! 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 <coughs> Quiet! Good boy. Speak! 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 <coughs> Quiet! Good boy. That is absolutely brilliant. Did you realise how clever your dog is? We thought he was clever, but in a mischievous way. Now the family are on the same page, Victoria wants to show Claire that she can control unruly red within the house. Good boy. I'm not telling him what to do. He's just working it out. If I stop and take my nose away from it, I get it. Good boy. Once Red learns he gets more rewards if he leaves the chicken alone, Victoria can teach him a command. Leave it. Good boy. Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Release. Good boy. But Claire's biggest problem was controlling Red and Jasper while looking after baby Ellie. Red. No! The other command that we've got to teach is the back command. If they're going near Ellie or anything that you don't want them to go close to, back. And they know to back off. Back! Back, good boy. What I was just teaching him basically is body blocking. And then I'm also using this signal. Yeah. Okay? So it's all you have to do. Start walking towards him using the signal. Back, back, back. Back, back, good boy. Back, back, back. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> back. With That's treats, good. he even yeah. seems to respond well to Claire's command. But the ultimate test is seeing how well Red, Red will behave back. in a real situation back. without back. the constant treats. Red back. Good boy. That is so good. He's not harassing you, is he? So Red appears to have got the message, <laughs> but what about when his partner in crime is in the room? Back. 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 But Good Jasper boy. is fast to learn, and it looks like Ellie won't be squashed beneath a flurry of dog feet. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. They'd have just looked at me as if to say what you're talking about and just carried on. Now it's up to Chris and Claire. 
If they want to have a harmonious home, they'll have to regularly walk the dogs and use all of Victoria's top tips. Labradors are bred to be working dogs and are full of energy, so if you want them to be well behaved, the golden rule is exercise, exercise, exercise. They need to get outside. Dogs learn quickly with food rewards. Leave it. But once they've learned the command, Good boy, release. Use food intermittently so that they work for the treat, not knowing whether it's coming or not. And the secret of successful training is to learn how to communicate with your dog in a way that he understands. Quiet. Good boy. Three weeks later, Victoria's back to find out if they did indeed listen to her words of wisdom. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, boys. Hi, Chris. Hi, you're right. Hi. There are improvements. <laughs> But the big question is whether the dogs have been getting the walks they need. Are you walking the dogs every day? Every single day. In the morning and at night, it's been great. I know what you really wanted to do was to be able to walk Ellie in her, in her pram. Not confident enough to try Red yet, mm -hmm. um, but Jasper and I and Ellie have all been out for a little walk, yeah, which was quite nice. Good boy. And with two walks a day, they seem visibly much calmer. But is Claire still on the verge of rehoming Rebel Red? There's a lot to do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And what we have been doing has been exhausting me. Mm. But I know he can be such a good dog with all the mental stimulation and the physical stimulation. I keep saying six months, don't I? If in six months Claire still says she can't cope, can you give me your promise that you would consider rehoming Red? I'll give you a promise that I'll consider it, yeah, definitely. The improvements that we've seen in this short space of time, I think six months is going to be more than long enough. But nothing can come before your wife and child? No. Nothing? No. Not after five years of waiting for Ellie? No. no. Right.